Good afternoon. Welcome to October's Tech Tuesday. We're going to be um, looking at um, Google Classroom today. And let me just go out to Google to get you started so you know where you're at. We are going to um, do this, this Tech Tuesday with nobody here this time because nobody signed up. But we're going to go ahead and record it. And I will put it up online so you guys can come back and look at this whenever it's convenient for you. Before we get started, I do want to point out that for the purpose of um, today, we do have a uh, this available for you online as a class. So if you go to tie.net, you'll be able to get to our workshops, which are located on the tie.net site up here at the top. And if you click on workshops, if you go down, you're going to see that there's um, register for a webinar, which is where you're going to um, get to see your Tech Tuesdays and get to find those. But if you look down a little further, there's some self-paced workshops and then there's our customized learning workshops. Under self-paced workshops, there's Google Classroom. And once you get signed up for this class, we'll send you a letter and a link that'll bring you to this classroom. Now on this classroom, we have um, based a lot of this out of a book called 50 Things You Can Do with Google Classroom by Alice Keeler and Libby Miller. Um, it's a book I highly recommend. It was written before they did some changes this summer, but there's a lot of great ideas in here that I think would be um, good for you. You can buy the book, you can take the class if you're a TIE member, which you must be if you're here. The class is free. If you're looking for credit, it is $40 a credit hour. Um, this is not a very difficult class because as I show you Google Classroom today, you're going to find that a lot of Google Classroom is just really, really easy to use. So let's get to that. Let's go back over here to where Google, we're in Google. And to get to Google Classroom, there's a couple of things that you can do. Sometimes you're going to see, if you click on this group of squares here, you're going to see um, some of the things that come up here. Rarely do I see Google Classroom show up here, which I'm not exactly sure why. But you can get to it by going in and saying classroom.google.com. And I also have drugged this down to my bookmark bar, so I have a bookmark right here. To do that, once you're here, you just grab it and drag it down, and it'll put it on your bookmark bar. Okay, so when I'm in my Google Classroom, this is what it looks like. I've put two classes together already. Um, um, I do need to back up just a little bit because Google Classroom is one of those things that you actually have to have a Google Apps account for. Now, some people don't understand the difference between just a regular Google account and a Google Apps account. So let me just take a minute and explain that. When you have a regular Google account, you have access to your Google, your Gmail, your calendar, your Google Docs, all of those things. You have your Google Drive, where you can store your documents, and it works great. I have one. My email to it is sherrycrowfoot.gmail.com, and I have access to the world. With Google Apps for Education, which is an apps account, um, the nice thing about that is it comes in and it puts an umbrella over your school and it kind of makes it more secure for the kids in your school. The In South Dakota, we are a Google state, so they've actually associated a Google account with all of our K-12 emails um, that we have in the state. Now, you do have to have your district contact the state to turn it on for your district. Some um, schools have already done that, others have not, and I've worked with at least one district that just won't do it, which means that you would not have access to Google Classroom. <coughs> um, once you have it, though, the nice part about Google Apps is it does give some control first to the state and then to your district in order to shut some things down. And while I'm not normally one that believes in a lot of control um, over things, I'm not a huge firewall fan. I will tell you that I'm very much in favor of not having kindergartners or first graders collaborate with strangers they don't know in another state or another country. I do think we need to be smart about how we do things. So they have the ability to go in and say that they can only collaborate with people within your school district, which I think is a, is a smart way to get young kids on the internet. You can um, loosen those controls as kids get older, um, and that's a district policy decision that has to be made as to how you're going to go about doing that. But with Google um, Apps for Education, they've added this new tool called, called Google Classroom. It's a learning management system that allows a teacher to communicate pretty easily with 
their students. Um, if you're already using Google Docs, um, you're already using Google Apps, it, it's just an easy way to use that within a system where you can assign things to your students and they can turn things into you. So I'm going to show you how that works. And you're going to find that it's super easy. It doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, which is one of the things I really like about it. So when I come in here, I can go over to these three little bars over here, and it'll show me the home pages where I'm at now that shows me my classes. They've recently added a Google Calendar in here, and we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. I can go in and see all the assignments, and I'll click on this. It'll show them for all of my classes, or I can narrow it down to one of my classes. So if I just go to this one, you're going to see the works that I've assigned to that specific class and I can go in and look at it or if I want to see everything I need to start looking at grading I can go in and see everything. Um, that makes it kind of nice as a teacher to get in here. I'm going to go back to my home and we're going to set up a brand new class so I'm going to click here and I have the option to join a class or to create a class. Now as a teacher I might wish to join a class if say my principal has set one up um, for the entire staff to use as a way to share documents, share information, that kind of thing. Or if a teacher group has formed to maybe do a book study or something like that, they might use Google Classroom for that. So I might need to join a class, but for today I'm going to go ahead and create one. And it's real simple. It's going to ask me what I want to name the class, and I'm going to say October Tech Tuesday demo and it says what section and I'm going to say October 2015 so I know when this is and I'm going to click create. Now it does take a minute or two to go ahead and create your class. Then you're going to have some options that you're going to be able to do to personalize your class a little bit but nothing that's in Google Classroom is very difficult to work with which is one of the reasons I really like it. Um, there's some really great other learning management systems out there, but they, they tend to take a little bit more of a learning curve. So the first thing I might want to do is personalize this. It comes in with this gray bar. It's got this pattern back here. I can either choose on this side to select a theme or to upload a photo if I have a photo I want to use. I'm not going to use the photo for right now. I'm just going to select a theme. And I have two choices. I can choose from a gallery or I can choose some patterns, which is where this one came from. Just scroll down here and let you see what some of the patterns look like. And let's go back over to the gallery. And there's a lot of choices in the gallery. Um, and it, it's just, I know it's just a picture and it kind of changes the color scheme on here. But it's just kind of a nice way to make your class a little more personal. I'm going to go ahead and choose, oh, I like these books. Let's choose these books. And I'm going to say select the theme. And it will change as it change the color here. And one of the nice things to you is if you put a different theme on each of your classes, it might help you know if you have four or five classes in there, which class you're in just by looking at the picture. Okay, so now that you're in here, you only have a couple of options, which is great. We're in the stream, and the stream is where your assignments or questions or announcements are going to show up. It looks a lot like Facebook when you start to see things rolling down your, your stream. We're going to get back and work here in just a few minutes. Um, I'm going to actually start at the other end, and I'm going to go to the about, because I want to put some things about this class. And I'm going to say October Tech Tuesday Demo. And I could put a class description in here. Learning, oops, about Google Classroom. And if you're using this in a class, you could put your room number in here. Since I'm not, I'm just going to put that it's online. I want you to make note that it created a, a Google drive class folder so all of my things for this class will end up in my google drive um, on that folder so it's called october tech tuesday demo if i go over here i believe these are still in alphabetical order or maybe i have to refresh hold on let me go ahead and refresh it because it should have already shown up over here in my google drive And I don't see it, which, oh, I know where it is. I bet it's in here under classroom. 
Okay, so here it is. Under classroom, and that's what I had to check. Then it adds a folder for every class that I've created. Some of these have already been archived. So this is the one for this, and it's if I open it up, you kind of don't want to mess with it because as you start adding assignments, it adds templates and things like that in here. But that's where you're going to be able to find your folder. So let me now go back to my classroom. Um, I have some other things it has added, like I said, this calendar. I could view it in the classroom or I could open the Google Calendar. Either way will get me to my calendar. I'm going to go ahead and save this. But let's say I had a typo in here. I have the choice to go up to these buttons here and click edit and I could go in and, and fix anything I want to change. Okay, the other thing that I can do is I can invite teachers in here. So if I have somebody who's going to co-teach a class with me, I have a teacher's aide who's going to need some access to this, I could just add them as a teacher and they would be able to see things and do things in this class as well. The next button that I want to come up to is the student button. You have two different ways to put your students in a class. You can give them a code which is this code right here, and I'm actually going to copy this code, and I'll show you why in a minute. So that's, I can give them this code and have them join, or I can invite students, and I'm going to go ahead just to show you both of these. Right now it's in my contacts, I'm going to go to all contacts, I actually have some fake students in here that I'm going to go ahead and add in here, and I invite the students. Now you're going to see on here that they're invited. They're actually not in the class until they open their email and accept the invitation, which is why I kind of like the other way. By the way, I can also choose for my students that they can post and comment. I can say they can only comment or only I can post or comment. I can actually choose that for different students so they have different rights in here. So I think... Nope, I guess it's for all. I guess it's all or nothing. So um, I can I can ch um, change the rights of my students. The other way to do it was if I gave them this class code, I'm going to go into another browser where I'm actually logged in as a student. When they're in here, they um, see all the classes that they're involved in, and they can do the same thing. When they click here, they can't create a class. They don't have those kinds of rights. So I can go in and enter the class code to join and say join. And immediately I'm in the same class. Now instead of students, it says who my classmates are. Because the four other people I invited have not joined, I have no classmates in here. They can read the about and see everything in here. They can see what shows up in the um, in the stream, it tells them that they have no work due soon. They have the rights to go over here and see their other classes, see the calendar, um, and see what assignments they have due. Okay, so this is what we're going to kind of flip between the student view and the teacher view, so you see it from both sides. So now let's go back to stream. With stream, there is a tour in here. You can go through that tour. I'm not going to do that right now because I do want to go through and um, show you how you can add things here. I could um, click on here to show anything that's deleted. I would still be able to see it. The kids can't do that. Um, for right now, I'll just leave that off. Right now, I have no work due soon because I haven't assigned anything. To assign things to students, you can go in here and when you click on this plus sign in the lower right corner, you have some options. You can reuse a post, so if you've had something you've done before and you want to reuse it, you can grab it here. You can create a question. Um, that's a great way to start some class discussion. You might start off your um, bell work for the day. When they come in while you're taking attendance, you might have a question posted that you want them to go ahead and respond to. The nice thing about that is they can each respond, see each other's responses, and respond to each other. So that's kind of nice. You can create an assignment or you can create an announcement. So if you want to remind them of an upcoming field trip or that student council elections are coming up, you can add those there as well. For right now, I want to go ahead and create an assignment. Now, when I do this, I can um, give them individual assignments, <coughs> say a worksheet, or I could actually give them um, a whole unit at one time. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to assign a Poe unit, and I'm going to say, watch video and do worksheet. 
and I'm just going to assign that much to them. Um, it's going to take them a couple of days, so I don't want to do tomorrow, so let's make it due on Friday the 9th. And I, let's say I don't want to have it due at midnight. I want to make it due at, uh, let's make it due at 3.30 in the afternoon. So I can choose what time and say save. So now it knows exactly when it's due. Now, what I can do is I can put in an assignment. I can assign them a Word document, a PDF. Um, I do want you to know that when you do that, when they turn it in, they don't have a handy little turn it in button. They actually have to upload an assignment, which is fine. But um, if you're using Google anyway, and if you assign something that's in Google Drive, it's easier for them to turn things in. So ideally, this is where I would probably go is to get things out of my Google Drive. I could assign them a video, a YouTube video. That's only going to work if your students are not blocked from YouTube. Um, but it's a nice way if you're planning to use YouTube video. And then you can also put in links to like specific websites you want them to go to. So for today's assignment, I've actually put everything in my Google Drive that I'm going to need. So when I go in here, it's in my PO unit. I'm going to open this up and I want to assign them this video. And holding down my control key, I can also assign them this video. And I'm going to do the Tail to Heart um, worksheet that's going to go with the two videos and say add. And it's going to put both parts of the video, one part one, part two, and the PDF um, file here. Actually, I thought I had renamed that, so I'm a little worried whether or not they're going to have the ability to write on that. We'll check that out here in just a minute. And then I can assign it. Now, I have some options to assign it or save it as a draft. So let's say I'm actually working ahead of my students and I'm creating my units and I want to put it together, but I'm not quite ready to assign it. I can just save it as a draft. And when I'm ready, I can you know do any last minute edits and go ahead and assign it then. So for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and assign it to my students. And so it shows up immediately in the stream in the stream and the kids will be able to get it. Right now, because I only have one student in my class, I know that I have one student that's not done with it. He hasn't, he or she hasn't turned anything in yet, so they haven't attached anything for me to look at. I can also add grades in here. So I could go in and say, I only want this worth 50 points. And it will update it and tell the student, this is only worth 50 points, it's not worth 100, which is great. So they know they have it due and they know it's worth 50 points. So let me go back over here and I will also go over and see what it looks like on the student side. It says the stream was updated, so show it. So immediately they get what their assignment is. So they can go through and look at the video, they can go in and look at the PDF and do their work. Now, I will tell you that I, got this video off of YouTube, but because I was worried that it would be problematic in my district, I went ahead and downloaded it to my computer, and you can find a YouTube downloader to get things to go to your computer. Because it was downloaded, I was able just to put it up here, and now I don't have to worry about YouTube being blocked. Now let me go ahead and open the worksheet and see if this is the version I had allowed students to write on. And I'm afraid it is not. So let me go back here and see if I can fix that because I really did put a version in here that should have been accessible for my kiddos. And that's not it. Hold on one second. Where did I put it? Oh, let me go ahead and just change this one. That'll be the fastest way. So if I go back to my PO unit and this one, I should be able to click on it and say share it. And it does say anyone with the link can edit it. So why did I not have editing rights? I'm sorry, I should have double checked this before I did this, but I should be able to type on it and um, and be able to have a turn in button show up on top, which makes it really nice for um, kids to be able to um, 
to turn things in. So I'll have to go back and figure out why I did that wrong. Um, but this gives you a way for kids to just be able to come in here, work on their little assignment, and then they should have had a button at the top here that says turn it in, and immediately I would know that they had turned it in. So when I go back over here into my class, I, I would be able to know right away if they could. Let me try adding one more assignment and see if that one will work for me. So, I know it was a science paper. Let's go ahead and make this due tomorrow. And I'm gonna go into my drive. And, we're gonna give them all this worksheet. And, oh, maybe this is what I didn't do for the other one. I wanna make a copy for each student and I'm going to assign it to them. That's what I think I did wrong on the other one. So now if I go back over as a student and I go back to my classroom, it says that I have another assignment. So I can go in here and I can open it. And it's opening right now. And when I'm done with this, I can click on turn it in. So let's actually open it and work on it. Just put some stuff in it and say turn it in. All right. So that has been turned in or it will be once I say this. And it was submitted, so I could unsubmit it if I didn't mean to do that, but I did, so I'm good with that. So back in my classroom, I can go back here and I have, it will show that I opened it. All right, so now let's go back to the teacher side. And if I go back in here, I can see that I have a science assignment due tomorrow. I have on Friday, my PO unit is due. My things are in here. But it shows me that one student is actually done with this because we turned it in. So I can now go in here. It says done. I can look at the work. And I could determine how many points their work was worth. Come back over here and give student one a grade of 98 points out of 100 and then they will find out that um, that that was done I could say return it and they'll get the grade they'll I, I believe they get an email saying that their grade was was that although let's let's actually go back and see if it said over here it said it was returned maybe it came right into here and if I say open It did not put a grade on it, so I'm not sure. It was probably in my email where the grade was. And if I, oh, here it is, there it is. If I want to give them a chance to redo, they can now resubmit their assignment if there were things that they wanted to fix. So it, it really gives you that two-way communication between your students and um, yourself, and they're able to, to get their work back pretty quickly. So back here to the teachers, that's how you turn in your assignments. That's how you grade them and check them. It's very convenient, really easy. Um, because it doesn't have a lot of buttons, it's super easy to work with. At the end of the semester or the year, I can go in, I can go back to classes, and let's say I'm done with this, I have an option to go here to rename it or to archive it. Um, I could rename it and take all my information out, reuse the class the way it is, or I could just start a fresh one. All of my assignments are in my Google Drive folder, so it's easy to grab them and make copies for each of my kids and have them work on it as well. So that's how you work with Google Docs. It's very fast, very easy, a great little learning management system. I will tell you it's only in its second year right now. 
it started last year and the makers of this particular Google product actually spent last year in classrooms watching how teachers were using this and it was funny because I've watched videos of them and they said it got used in ways they had never anticipated and so they over the summer did a massive redo on this they um, added like I said the calendar so if I go into the calendar I see all of my classes here um, I could narrow it down to my Tech Tuesday, which is the only thing I have assignments due this week on. But I would be able to see what my um, assignments are for the week um, as a teacher and as a student. So I know when things are due. Um, this was a feature I was really hoping they were going to add. Google Calendar keeps me organized, so I definitely see the value of it in here. Um, but they but they made some changes over the summer to make this better. I would anticipate as it goes on and teachers make more suggestions this may change continually because Google is really good about that but um, I don't anticipate that it will be get get um, in a place that's difficult for teachers to use because that's been their big emphasis on this is something that's just easy not complicated and a great way to communicate with your students so I hope you were able to pick up some tips on here. You can um, go back to the class if you're interested in the class. Um, I think the class is um, super helpful. Like I said, we um, took it from um, this book about 50 things you can do with your classroom. You can use it in multiple other ways, ways to um, communicate with other teachers or with um, you could have your entire staff meeting via a Google Classroom. If you guys don't have time to meet, committees can meet and do some work in this. Just a nice little system to, to hand out documents and to have everybody on board. So there's a whole bunch of ways to use it in here as well as um, some different um, hints on how to use the, the, the tool itself. So, thank you for joining us for Tech Tuesday, and we look forward to joining us again next month.